Press Pulse, a novel therapeutic strategy for the metabolic management of cancer. Abstract. Background. A shift from respiration to fermentation is a common metabolic hallmark of cancer cells. As a result, glucose and glutamine become the prime fuels for driving the dysregulated growth of tumors. The simultaneous occurrence of press pulse disturbances was considered the mechanism responsible for reduction of organic populations during prior evolutionary epochs. Press disturbances produce chronic stress, while pulse disturbances produce acute stress on populations. It was only when both disturbances coincide that population reduction occurred. Methods This general concept can be applied to the management of cancer by creating chronic metabolic stresses on tumor cell energy metabolism, press disturbance, that are coupled to a series of acute metabolic stressors that restrict glucose and glutamine availability while also stimulating cancer-specific oxidative stress, pulse disturbances. The elevation of non-fermentable ketone bodies protect normal cells from energy stress while further enhancing energy stress in tumor cells that lack the metabolic flexibility to use ketones as an efficient energy source. Mitochondrial abnormalities and genetic mutations make tumor cells vulnerable to metabolic stress. Results The press pulse therapeutic strategy for cancer management is illustrated with calorie-restricted ketogenic diets, KDR used together with drugs and procedures that create both chronic and intermittent acute stress on tumor cell energy metabolism, while protecting and enhancing the energy metabolism of normal cells. Conclusions Optimization of dosing, timing, and scheduling of the press pulse therapeutic strategy will facilitate the eradication of tumor cells with minimal patient toxicity. This therapeutic strategy can be used as a framework for the design of clinical trials for the non-toxic management of most cancers. Background. We describe how a modification of the press pulse concept can be adopted as a therapeutic strategy for the possible eradication of tumor cells. The press pulse concept should be best considered in light of current views on the origin of cancer. The origin of cancer. Cancer is a systemic disease involving multiple time and space dependent changes in the health status of cells and tissues that ultimately lead to malignant tumors. Neoplasia involving dysregulated cell growth is the biological endpoint of the disease. Tumor cell invasion into surrounding tissues and their spread, metastasis, to distant organs is the primary cause of morbidity and mortality of most cancer patients. Data from the American Cancer Society show that the rate of increase in cancer deaths per year was twofold greater than the rate of increase in new cases per year from 2013 to 2017. Indeed, Cancer is predicted to overtake heart disease as the leading cause of death in Western societies. The failure to clearly define the origin of cancer is responsible in large part for the failure to significantly reduce the cancer death rate from treatments and in developing cancer prevention strategies. Cancer is generally considered a genetic disease, where random somatic mutations underlie the origin and progression of the disease. This general view is now under serious reconsideration in light of major inconsistencies with the gene theory. Emerging evidence from the Cancer Genome Project shows that most malignant tumors are remarkably heterogeneous. This degree of heterogeneity will confound attempts to exploit genomic defects for effective therapies. Moreover, the majority of genetic mutations are considered downstream epiphenomena of dysregulated energy metabolism. In contrast to the extensive genetic heterogeneity seen in tumors, most, if not all neoplastic cells within tumors share the common metabolic malady of aerobic fermentation that arises ultimately from dysregulated oxidative phosphorylation. In light of these findings, cancer can also be recognized as a metabolic disease. Methods Aerobic fermentation, a common metabolic malady of tumor cells. Most cells of the body oxidize glucose to CO2 and water for energy production. Otto Warburg first proposed that all cancers arise from damage to cellular respiration. As a result, cancer cells increase their capacity to produce lactic acid even in the presence of oxygen in order to compensate for their insufficient respiration. Although Warburg's hypothesis on the origin of cancer has created confusion and controversy, his hypothesis has never been disproved. The Warburg theory of insufficient aerobic respiration remains as the most credible explanation for the origin of tumor cells. 
The main points of Warburg's theory are, 1. Insufficient respiration is the predisposing initiator of tumor genesis and ultimately cancer. 2. Energy through glycolysis gradually compensates for insufficient energy through respiration. 3. Cancer cells continue to produce lactic acid in the presence of oxygen. And 4. Respiratory insufficiency eventually becomes irreversible. Ephraim Racker coined the term Warburg effect, which refers to the aerobic glycolysis that occurs in cancer cells. Warburg clearly demonstrated that aerobic fermentation, aerobic glycolysis, is an effect, and not the cause, of insufficient respiration. Hence, the targeting of fermentable fuels becomes of prime importance for cancer management. Elevated glucose consumption would be expected for any glucose-dependent cell with quantitative or qualitative abnormalities in mitochondria, as enhanced fermentation would be needed to compensate for the insufficient respiration. Indeed, all tumor cells that have been examined to date contain abnormalities in the content or composition of cardiolipin the signature lipid of the inner mitochondrial membrane that regulates oxidative phosphorylation. Mammalian cells containing abnormalities in cardiolipin cannot respire effectively, and will therefore need to increase energy production through fermentation reactions. This fact cannot be overemphasized considering arguments that tumor cells can have normal respiration. The cardiolipin abnormalities found in tumor cells provide direct support for Warburg's central theory. In addition to cardiolipin abnormalities, Peterson also showed that some degree of abnormality could be found in the number, structure, or function of tumor cell mitochondria, providing further support for Warburg's theory. The evidence supporting Warburg's original theory comes from a broad range of cancers and is now overwhelming. Hence, respiratory insufficiency, arising from any number of mitochondrial defects, can contribute to the fermentation metabolism seen in tumor cells. Although the abnormal energy metabolism and mitochondrial abnormalities seen in most cancers could arise in part through oncogenic modulation of metabolism, the data from the nuclear and mitochondrial transfer experiments suggest that oncogene changes are effects, rather than causes, of tumorigenesis. The acquisition of dysfunctional mitochondria in macrophages through fusion hybridization with non-metastatic tumor cells provides a compelling argument for the origin of those cancer cells that become metastatic. We recently showed how all of the Hanahan and Weinberg hallmarks of cancer, including the genomic mutations, could be linked either directly or indirectly to mitochondrial dysfunction. Amino acid fermentation could also drive cancer metabolism. As the result of insufficient aerobic respiration, cancer cells must rely primarily on fermentation metabolism to maintain energy balance and viability. Besides substrate-level phosphorylation in the cytoplasm through lactic acid fermentation, TCA cycle substrate-level phosphorylation can also produce significant amounts of ATP. In addition to glucose, cancer cells also rely heavily on glutamine for growth and survival. Glucose and glutamine act synergistically for driving rapid tumor cell growth. Glutamine metabolism can produce ATP from the TCA cycle under aerobic conditions. We suggest that the metabolism of glucose and glutamine for energy will depend on the physiological state of the tumor microenvironment and will be of greater significance in tumors with an aggressive Warburg phenotype. We found that glutamine targeting can be effective in managing systemic metastatic cancer in the VM, DK mice. It should be recognized that with the exception of glucose and glutamine, none of the other potential fuels needed for tumor cell fermentation would likely be available in sufficient quantities to drive robust tumor cell growth. As many amino acids are synthesized from glucose and glutamine, targeting glucose and glutamine will deprive the microenvironment of fermentable fuels. Hence, the restriction of glucose and glutamine becomes of prime importance for targeting tumor cell growth and survival. Genome Integrity and Energy Metabolism Emerging evidence indicates that the function of DNA repair enzymes and the integrity of the nuclear genome are dependent to a large extent on the energy derived from normal respiration. Previous studies in yeast and mammalian cells show that disruption of aerobic respiration can cause mutations, loss of heterozygosity, chromosome instability, and epigenetic modifications, etc., in the nuclear genome. 
A protracted reliance on fermentation causes oxidative stress leading to the production of reactive oxygen species, ROS. Excess ROS production damages mitochondrial function and can be both carcinogenic and mutagenic. The somatic mutations and genomic instability seen in tumor cells thus arise from a protracted reliance on fermentation energy metabolism and a disruption of redox balance through excess oxidative stress. We recently discussed how a transition from respiration to fermentation could account for St. Georgi's oncogenic paradox, i.e., the process by which various provocative agents, radiation, inflammation, hypoxia, carcinogenic chemicals, age, germline mutations, etc., could produce cancer through a common pathological mechanism. Mukherjee and Cairns also struggled to explain the oncogenic paradox. All of these provocative cancer-causing agents damage respiration, thus forcing the cells to rely more heavily on energy generated through fermentation for survival. According to the mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer, the large genomic heterogeneity seen in tumor cells arises as a consequence, rather than as a cause, of mitochondrial dysfunction. A therapeutic strategy targeting the metabolic abnormality common to most tumor cells should therefore be more effective in managing cancer than would a strategy targeting genetic mutations that vary widely between tumors of the same histological grade and even within the same tumor. It is difficult to conceive how a random accumulation of somatic mutations could enhance the adaptability and fitness of cancer cells. It is important to recognize that mutations in P53, KROS, and RAF impact negatively on mitochondrial energy efficiency, thus making cells with these mutations less metabolically flexible than normal cells. Hypoxic adaptation of tumor cells allows for them to avoid apoptosis due to their metabolic reprogramming, following a gradual loss of respiratory function. The high rates of tumor cell glycolysis and glutaminolysis will also make them resistant to apoptosis, ROS, and chemotherapy drugs. Despite having high levels of ROS, glutamate derived from glutamine contributes to glutathione production that can protect tumor cells from ROS. As long as the tumor cells have access to the metabolic fuels needed for glycolysis and TCA cycle substrate level phosphorylation, glucose and glutamine, they will give the appearance of having a growth advantage over most normal cells. When mice or people with tumors are placed under energy stress using dietary energy reduction, glucose restriction, many tumor cells die, while normal cells survive. Indeed, the health and vitality of the normal cells improves with time under dietary energy reduction, while hyperglycolytic tumor cells undergo energetic crisis triggering apoptotic death. Support for this contention comes from studies of treating brain tumors with dietary energy stress. It is clear that adaptability to environmental stress is greater in normal cells than in tumor cells, as normal cells can transition from the metabolism of glucose to the metabolism of ketone bodies when glucose becomes limiting. Mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation is less robust in tumor cells than in normal cells, while glucose utilization through lactic acid fermentation is greater in tumor cells than in normal cells. Targeting glucose availability will therefore cause greater death in the tumor cells than in the normal cells. Mitochondrial respiratory chain defects will prevent tumor cells from using ketone bodies for energy. Consequently, glycolysis-dependent tumor cells are less adaptable to metabolic stress than are the normal cells. This vulnerability can be exploited for targeting tumor cell energy metabolism. In contrast to dietary energy reduction, radiation and toxic drugs can damage the microenvironment and transform normal cells into tumor cells while also creating tumor cells that become highly resistant to drugs and radiation. Drug-resistant tumor cells arise in large part from the damage to respiration in bystander precancerous cells. The greater adaptability of normal cells than tumor cells to energy stress is predicted based on the theories of Darwin and Potts. Metabolic flexibility allows the organism to respond in a coordinated way to environmental stress and limited substrate availability. Energy stress will force all normal cells to work together for the survival of the organism. Pathogenic mutations and genomic instability will reduce adaptability and metabolic flexibility under energy stress. The greater the genomic instability in tumor cells, 
the less will be their adaptability to stress. Because energy generated through substrate-level phosphorylation is greater in tumor cells than in normal cells, tumor cells are more dependent than normal cells on the availability of fermentable fuels, glucose and glutamine. With few exceptions, most normal cells shift energy metabolism from glucose to ketone bodies and fats when placed under energy stress from glucose deprivation, insulin deficiency, and prolonged fasting. This shift is the result of adaptive versatility and genomic stability, which is lacking in the tumor cells, but is prominent in cells and tissues with robust mitochondrial function. Tumor cells will have difficulty surviving and growing, regardless of their complement of genomic changes, if fermentable fuels become restricted in the microenvironment. Ketone bodies and fats are non-fermentable fuels. Tumor cells have difficulty using ketone bodies and fats for fuel when glucose is reduced. The studies in immunocompetent syngenic mice and xenografts with brain tumors are proof of concept that tumor cells are less adaptable than normal cells when placed under energy stress. Apoptosis under energy stress is greater in tumor cells than in normal cells. The multiple genetic defects in tumor cells will reduce genomic flexibility, thus increasing the likelihood of cell death under environmental stress that would lower glucose and elevate ketone bodies. These defects can be exploited for tumor management or even resolution. Results. Press Pulse, a therapeutic strategy for the gradual elimination of cancer cells. Mark Vincent suggested how a press pulse strategy could be used to target tumor cells. We have now expanded this concept to show how a press pulse therapeutic strategy can be used for the non-toxic management and possible resolution of cancer. A calorie-restricted ketogenic diet or dietary energy reduction creates chronic metabolic stress in the body. This energy stress acts as a press disturbance, the effects of which would be greater in the tumor cells than in the normal cells due to their dependency on fermentation energy metabolism. Drugs that target availability of glucose and glutamine would act as pulse disturbances in causing an acute reduction of these tumor-dependent fuels. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy can also be considered another pulse disturbance in elevating ROS to a greater degree in tumor cells than in normal cells, thus promoting cancer cell death through redox stress. Normal cells readily transition to ketone body metabolism for protection against ROS damage and oxidative stress. The goal therefore is to produce a therapeutic strategy that can more effectively manage cancer than can the toxic cancer therapies currently used in most standards of care. The following examples illustrate the potential of press pulse therapeutic strategies for cancer management. Calorie restriction and restricted ketogenic diets, a press disturbance. Calorie restriction, water-only fasting, and restricted ketogenic diets reduce circulating glucose and insulin levels, while elevating circulating levels of ketone bodies. Ketogenic diets are low-carbohydrate, high-fat diets, that are widely used to reduce refractory epileptic seizures in children. The ketogenic diet can more effectively reduce glucose and elevate blood ketone bodies than can calorie restriction alone, making the ketogenic diet potentially more therapeutic against tumors than calorie restriction. The protein and fat composition of the ketogenic diet differs from that of Atkins-type diets in having comparatively less protein and more fat than the Atkins diets. This is important as several amino acids found in proteins can be deaminated to form pyruvate, which can then be metabolized to form glucose through gluconeogenesis. Campbell showed that tumor growth in rats is greater under high protein, above 20%, than under low protein content, below 10%, in the diet. Protein amino acids can be metabolized to glucose through the Cori cycle. Calorie restriction, fasting, and restricted ketogenic diets are anti-angiogenic, anti-inflammatory and pro-apoptotic, and thus can target and eliminate tumor cells through multiple mechanisms. Ketogenic diets can also spare muscle protein, enhance immunity, and delay cancer cachexia, which is a major problem in managing metastatic cancer. The therapeutic effects of ketogenic diets used alone or in combination with other therapies have been documented in preclinical studies for several cancer models, including neuroblastoma, lung cancer, prostate cancer, breast and ovarian cancers, head and neck cancers, colon cancer and pancreatic cancer.
It is clear from these studies and other studies in children and adults with cancer that ketogenic diets are generally safe and well tolerated. These observations are also consistent with decades of research obtained from evaluation of children treated with ketogenic diets for epilepsy management. Information on ketogenic diets can be obtained from the Charlie Foundation website, www.charliefoundation.org. We recently developed the Glucose Ketone Index Calculator, GKIC, to assess the potential therapeutic effects of various low-carbohydrate and ketogenic diets for brain cancer management. The GKIC is a simple tool that measures the ratio of blood glucose to blood ketones and can help monitor the efficacy of metabolic therapy in preclinical animal models and in clinical trials for malignant brain cancer or for any cancer that expresses aerobic fermentation. GKI values of 1.0 or below are considered therapeutic, though therapeutic benefit appears to be associated more with elevated ketone bodies and suppression of insulin than with reduced glucose. However, the elevation of ketone body levels is generally greater when blood glucose levels are lower than when glucose levels are higher. The GKI can therefore serve as a biomarker to assess the therapeutic efficacy of various diets in a broad range of cancers. Reduced glucose availability and suppression of insulin signaling will produce chronic energy stress on those tumor cells that depend primarily on glucose for growth and survival. The water-soluble ketone bodies, D-beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate, are produced largely in the liver from adipocyte-derived fatty acids and ketogenic dietary fat. Due to mitochondrial defects, tumor cells cannot exploit the therapeutic benefits of burning ketone bodies as normal cells would. Ketone bodies spare normal cells but suppress growth in cancer cells. Deregulated inflammation is also considered to be one of the hallmarks of cancer. Therapeutic ketosis reduces circulating inflammatory markers, and ketones directly inhibit the NLRP3 inflammasome, an important pro-inflammatory pathway linked to carcinogenesis and an important target for cancer treatment response. Psychological stress reduction, a press disturbance. Chronic psychological stress is known to promote tumorigenesis through elevations of blood glucose, glucocorticoids, catecholamines and insulin-like growth factor. IGF-1. In addition to calorie-restricted ketogenic diets, psychological stress management involving exercise, yoga, music, etc., also act as press disturbances that can help reduce fatigue, depression, and anxiety in cancer patients and in animal models. Ketone supplementation has also been shown to reduce anxiety behavior in animal models. The mechanism of action of psychological stress management for cancer control would largely involve reductions in blood glucose levels that contribute to tumor growth. Restricted ketogenic diet used with 2-deoxyglucose. Calorie restriction or therapeutic fasting is anti-angiogenic, anti-inflammatory and pro-apoptotic, and thus targets multiple cancer hallmarks. This physiological state also enhances the efficacy of chemotherapy and radiation therapy while reducing the side effects. Indeed, lower dosages of chemotherapeutic drugs can be used when administered together with calorie restriction or restricted ketogenic diets. Ketogenic diet used with radiation therapy. Adrian Sheck and colleagues showed that the therapeutic efficacy of radiotherapy against the orthotopically grown GL261 mouse glioma could be greatly enhanced when combined with a commercially available ketogenic diet. No signs of tumor recurrence were seen for over 200 days when the treated mice were switched to the standard diet 101 days after tumor implantation. These findings suggest tumor resolution in some of the mice treated with the combined therapy. In this example, the ketogenic diet is the press, and radiotherapy is the pulse. It is important to recognize, however, that the radiotherapy used in glioma patients can damage the respiration of normal cells, and increase availability of glutamine in the microenvironment, which can increase risk of tumor recurrence, especially when used together with the steroid drug dexamethasone. A ketogenic diet used with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Poff and colleagues demonstrated that hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, enhanced the ability of the ketogenic diet to reduce tumor growth and metastasis.
Evidence in animal models and in humans suggests that hyperbaric oxygen therapy may have a modest anti-cancer effect when used alone, but appears most efficacious when it is used in combination with standard of care. Indeed, hyperbaric oxygen therapy has proven effective when used prior to radiation therapy for glioblastoma. The mechanism of HBOT in tumor management is not yet clear, but saturating the tumor with oxygen could reverse hypoxia and suppresses growth. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy also increases oxidative stress and membrane lipid peroxidation of glioblastoma cells in vitro. The effects of the ketogenic diet and hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be enhanced with administration of exogenous ketones, which further suppress tumor growth and metastasis. Besides hyperbaric oxygen therapy, intravenous vitamin C and dichloroacetate, DCA, can also be used with the ketogenic diet to selectively increase oxidative stress in tumor cells. Recent evidence also shows that ketone supplementation may enhance or preserve overall physical and mental health, which are often compromised due to disease progression and standard of care therapies. Under these conditions, the ketogenic diet with exogenous ketones serve as the press, while hyperbaric oxygen therapy serves as the pulse. Although hyperbaric oxygen therapy and radiotherapy kill tumor cells through oxidative stress, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is less toxic to normal cells than is radiotherapy. Calorie restriction used with glutamine targeting for metastatic cancer. Some tumors use glucose as a prime fuel for growth, whereas other tumors use glutamine as a prime fuel. Glutamine-dependent tumors are generally less detectable than glucose-dependent under FDG PET imaging but could be detected under glutamine-based PET imaging. Glutamine targeting should have therapeutic benefit against those tumors that depend on glutamine for growth and survival. We found that the highly metastatic VMM3 tumor cells are dependent primarily on availability of glutamine for growth and ability to spread systemically. The glutaminase inhibitor Don, 6-diazo-5-oxo-L-norleucine, has shown therapeutic benefit in the clinic, as long as toxicity can be managed. Don could work best when combined with inhibitors of glycolysis such as lonidamine. In addition to Don, other glutamine inhibitors could also be therapeutic in targeting glutamine-dependent tumors. A greater attention to possible adverse effects will be needed for glutamine targeting than for glucose targeting, as glutamine is involved with several essential physiological functions, especially for cells of the immune system. It might therefore be necessary to also periodically schedule glutamine supplementation with glutamine targeting to obtain maximum therapeutic benefit while protecting immune system function. Although calorie restriction could partially reduce distal invasion of VMM3 tumor cell in brain and reduce primary tumor growth in flank, calorie restriction did not prevent systemic metastasis despite causing reduction in blood glucose and elevation of ketone bodies. However, Don had a major effect in reducing both primary tumor size and systemic metastasis, indicative of the importance of glutamine in driving this tumor. A synergistic interaction was also seen when Don was combined with calorie restriction. Modifications of Don scheduling, timing, and dosing would be needed to improve efficacy and reduce toxicity. In this example, calorie restriction is the press, and Don is the pulse. As glutamine is a major fuel of immune cells, glutamine targeting should be effective in reducing most metastatic cancers that have characteristics of macrophages and other immune cells. Optimization of scheduling, timing, and dosing. The success of the press pulse therapeutic strategy for the metabolic management of cancer will depend on optimization of the scheduling, dosing, and timing of the various diets, drugs, and procedures used in order to achieve maximum synergistic interactions. Scheduling will involve the order in which the chosen pulses are delivered to the subject while under dietary therapy. Timing will determine when and for how long the presses and pulses are given, numbers per day, per week, per month, etc. Dosing will identify the optimal drug dosages needed to kill tumor cells, while preventing or minimizing systemic toxicity. Scheduling for each of these variables can be adjusted for the age, sex, and general health status of the subject. The strategy should degrade tumor cell populations gradually to prevent tumor lysis syndrome, which could cause excessive toxicity. Tumor imaging procedures involving FDG-PET, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, 
and computed tomography perfusion, CTP, as well as analysis of serum cancer biomarkers should be helpful in assessing therapeutic success. The goal of the PRESS Pulse therapeutic strategy is to improve progression-free and overall survival from cancer without producing adverse effects from the treatment. Discussion and Conclusions Many of the current treatments used for cancer management are based on the view that cancer is a genetic disease. It is clear from the cancer death statistics that most current therapies are failing in their ability to reduce the yearly death rate or to manage the disease without toxicity. Emerging evidence indicates that cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disease that depends on availability of fermentable fuels for tumor cell growth and survival. Glucose and glutamine are the most abundant fermentable fuels present in the circulation and in the tumor microenvironment. The Press Pulse Therapeutic Strategy is designed to target availability of glucose and glutamine, thus starving tumor cells of their most important fuels and increasing their vulnerability to oxidative stress and apoptotic death. Low-carbohydrate, high-fat ketogenic diets coupled with glycolysis inhibitors will reduce metabolic flux. Don and other similar glutamine inhibitors will deprive proliferating tumor cells of the glutamine needed. Glutamine targeting will require careful adjustments. However, as glutamine is a key metabolite needed for the immune system and for other physiological functions, hyperbaric oxygen therapy combined with the calorie restricted ketogenic diet will kill tumor cells through apoptotic and anti angiogenic mechanisms while also reducing inflammation in the tumor microenvironment and systemically. It is our view that the press pulse paradigm is a compelling and parsimonious therapeutic strategy for effectively managing the vast majority of malignant cancers with minimal toxicity, as this approach will target the major energy pathways responsible for tumor cell growth and survival, while enhancing the energetic efficiency of normal body cells and tissues.